if you could get a really good job or be totally and happily financially independent without going to school, would you still go to school? Or if you had children, would you send your children to school if you were sure with all certainty that they could be rich, successful, and ultimately happy without going to school? And I'll, let, let me make a bit of a clarification here. So when I speak about school, I'm really talking about tertiary education. Well, I had the benefit of a relatively good education, and I came from a very academic family with a father who was a university lecturer at the time, and my mother was a school principal, and we lived on a university campus. So I sort of struggle with, what did I really learn in university? I mean, at the time, 20s, 22 years ago when I went into school, the whole idea was to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, or a failure in the eyes of your parents, uncles, aunties, and stuff like that. So of course I went to do electrical electronics engineering. I think I was a bit smart. I wanted to, they said if you did petroleum, you could only work in the oil company. But if you did electrical electronics, you could do computer, control, and petroleum, oil and gas. Um, I schooled in Nigeria all my life. I'm still planning to get a better education. But I'm also struggling with the fact whether what I need to know is actually available in school. Some of my idols, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, Larry Page, Sergey Brin, Bill Gates, they all kind of dropped out of school. <laughs> I, I not only called people in technology where I work, actually called billionaires, right? Just kind of idols I have. And they all dropped out of school. So the question is, does school really provide what you need? And if it doesn't, where do you find that knowledge, that understanding to actually succeed? I spent nine useful years in the university trying to get a first degree. The University of Rio. Yeah, I made a few bad friends when I was in like 16 years old and all that. And then a few distractions here. But I, I, I was relatively a brilliant chap. And I, I honestly should have finished in four or five years. But it did take me nine years to get that electrical electronics engineering degree that for the past 12 years has been completely worthless. People do microbiology, botany, and then they go work in a bank or in the civil service. And it's not like botany or microbiology are bad courses in any way. It's essentially the way we are being taught, the non-existent practicals, and the fact that we, we don't even relate these things properly to real life scenarios. We're literally not using our education. But we commit a considerable amount of time. Three. Four, and I'm going to step out of the circle a bit because in my situation, nine years to get this degree that I don't use anymore. I work in technology, happen to work for probably one of the most desirable companies in the world to work for. And every now and then, in our field, when we're Picking to job interviewees, when we're looking for team members, co-founders, or when I'm asked to make a referral for some awesome company, it is so difficult to find someone who came straight out of school who's ready for the industry. Someone spent four or five years studying computer science in Nigeria, knows very much about mainframe computers, Pascal, Fortran 77, basic, but can't build a simple website 
or put together a mobile phone app. And then you realize that some other people, whatever course they studied, are able to do a two-month program, a 12-week boot camp, sometimes even a one-day coaching on digital skills, and they're able to hold down a job right after 10 weeks or 12 weeks of guidance and instruction. So the question is, why those four or five years? Between Sweet 16, where everyone felt I was really bright, and sort of like a midlife crisis at 35, 36, where I was about joining politics. Not like politics is wrong, but like my people came to me and say, Dika, come and go. <laughs> it is people like you we are looking for. Your father was the X, Y, Z, and therefore we will push you along. And I was seriously considering this. Because some of my friends, some even invited me here, had built their houses, were driving fancy cars. And I was just a smart kid from 20-something years ago who always used to confess with nothing to my name at the time. But it was a long, hard 20 years of finding the opportunity and the resources to do what I do now and the kind of fulfillment I get from that. Most of the connections I made back 20, 22 years ago, aren't very useful for me. As a matter of fact, I should have graduated in about 2002, 2003. And at that time, there was a GSM boom in the country. Infrastructure was being laid, cables, towers, jobs. There were companies coming in. There were dollars pouring into the Nigerian economy. People were investing in GSM. We were electrical electronics engineers at the cusp of the revolution. And there was absolutely nothing we were learning in school that was going to teach us how to make a phone call or send a text message or make two phones talk to one another. I would take a little bit of time to tell you a little bit about the solution or proposed solution of some of the interventions I have seen that are making gigantic strides in the industry worldwide and even here in Nigeria, hubs, innovation spaces, accelerators, incubators. And if you don't know much about this, because these are like tech-specific things, um, they're basically places, they're kind of like the new libraries or the new cyber cafes, where people come in contact with two very important things. I, I, I'll say three, but the third one is still at infancy in Nigeria right now. The first thing you find in an innovation space is mentorship. Mentorship. You would find people who have done this before and are willing to help you go along the way. Entrepreneurs who have done this before, who give up their time to show you how to do it. You don't have all the time in the world to make all the mistakes. And I say tech hubs and innovation spaces because Okay, which Nigerian institution would you go to right now to learn how to create Angry Birds or Candy Crush? But these are multi-million dollar games. So if we do not have institutions or places where people can actually learn how to key into this industry, how the heck are we going to diversify our economy? Or let's move away from those very, you know, talk about YouTube or Facebook, or Instagram, or WhatsApp. Companies that were acquired for billions of dollars. Are there places in Nigeria where you can find the resources and the information? That's the places, schools, colleges, polytechnics, to get that information. The second thing you would find in these innovation spaces is communities. And this is where, and in what I work. There's a question out there. If you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. It's a very popular African proverb. In these communities, which you find in these tech hubs and innovation spaces, very vibrant, like-minded people, volunteers come together, share, do all the things they do together. Okay, what are you working on? They teach, they mentor, they train. They gather people together. They gather resources. People find their co-founders. It's in these kind of places, 
and unfortunately, maybe not here, but in some places like Lagos, you are sitting down just with a friend or colleague working on something, and then Mark Zuckerberg walks in. And your life changes forever. I actually do know, know a lady who used to come to one of these innovation spaces in Lagos, CC Hub, had no clue what she was doing. She was actually a first-class brain from OAU, Teju. And then one day, she's sitting in front of her laptop, and Mark just walks in front of her, shakes her hand. They have a conversation. Now, check out Tedra Afonja. She's one of the leading teachers and practitioners of artificial intelligence in Nigeria today. She just got blown away by that interaction. And I'm privileged in my role, doing amazing events. We had one in New York yesterday, DevFest South South. This was Lagos about three weeks ago. 2,000 developers came together to discuss, learn, and share technology. Probably the biggest achievement in my career at Google. What was more compelling and satisfying was the actual fact that on social media, we didn't get up to two or three bad reviews. I'd say we didn't even get one. So I see these communities as an opportunity for people to understand one another. Like I said, find your co-founder, find your supporter. And it's in these communities that are gathered where they, everyone knows there is knowledge, there is resource, that eventually interventions, companies, investment dollars are coming into. Now, it's pretty sad that these things are happening outside our academic institutions. And I strongly believe they are conscious and deliberate things we can do as government, as philanthropists, to make sure that this gap between industry and academia is closed. So right now, I think Andre said school doesn't, I think school sucks. I think it's broken. It should be fixed. The limit of my circle of influence, my knowledge is within tech, software development. And I've seen the trends. No, like Cobham said, we listen to him, no substitute to sort of like technical excellence. No excuses for failure. And I'm very proud to say that the software engineering industry in Nigeria is exhibiting those claims of being world class, of stepping up to the biggest companies in the world, including companies like Google, and giving them a run for their money in some specific markets. So the things we can create now, and some of those things we are creating in Africa, and the things we can do together as communities, literally know no bound when we put ourselves, our hearts, and our resources into it. So I think schools fail in, and I think the hubs, the innovation spaces, are plugging that gap, providing the path for us to, to provide mentorship and for communities to convene. We think we need to do a little more around that. And even here in Potaka, there's amazing things going on with the Lotus Square, Tech Creek, Kensar, we were hub, but it's just not enough. We actually do need a critical mass of those kind of institutions building the talent that the industry badly needs. So in conclusion, I want to think and I tend to say, if you don't know where you're going to, how do you know when you get there? Or as my friend put it, so no matter how fast a man or woman drives on the wrong road, you will never get to your destination. So we've had an opportunity right now. There's a whole new wave of innovation. Not enough going on. We really need this at critical mass. We need people to find their education, their opportunity, their learning that is practical and useful. All we need to do is get people the right awareness and put them in front of a screen or empower them with a device that is connected with adequate great bandwidth and they're doing the right and responsible things online. Give them that power and they can do anything. Exponential computing, people say this, quote me, don't quote me, the phones we carry in our pocket right now, we're more powerful than the computers that they had at NASA, that they had in the 60s. 
when Kennedy dared to put a man on the moon and succeeded in doing it. You have more compute power, more storage, more RAM in your pocket, in the palm of your hands, more bandwidth. Why do we still spend four years in school? Why do you have to do a research dissertation? I was in, I was in Addis two days ago, and we were having a conversation. Ethiopia, Nigeria, Egypt. How many people are we? Who's the most populous? Is Ethiopia second or third? 20 years ago, 25 years ago, to answer that question, you would have gone to a library, you would have asked some questions. It probably could have taken three or four days to get a concrete answer. Just whip out a phone, search query, boom, you get your answer. And then you have to make a bit of a decision about how credible that answer is or what's the authority that's providing that answer. So does a term paper or a dissertation really need to take six months or two years? I see a few people who went to school here before Google and Wikipedia. You did a good job. But right now, computing is getting cheaper, more accessible, and there's so much more you can do if you have the right orientation and access. So as a lot of organizations, for-profit and non-profit are doing a lot, and some governments in Nigeria are trying to make information more accessible and provide the kind of resources that actually can liberate the young Nigerian and give him everything he needs to be great. I think it's time to do more. I think it's time to fix school. What would you do if you were not afraid, including dropping out to pursue your dreams and not waste your time in school? I didn't drop out, so I'm not going to advise you to do it. But through my career, there are a few things I have done while I was afraid. So do it afraid, just do it. Thank you.